So a short explanation of pay ID and SUM. So let's say you're John Doe and you are using SUM as a client, your wallet app for the XRPL, only the XRPL, and let's say you use Uphold as your uh, destination, you want to make a transfer, Uphold an exchange of course, where your KYC doesn't really matter in this uh, stage of the uh, example. So Uphold owns Uphold.com and issues John.DoeUpHold.com. So when you want to make a transfer to a pay ID, uh, the specification specifies that Uphold.com is going to be queried for the pay ID for John Doe. There's an information exchange happening. Uphold knows the user and replies the destination address R or whatever and a destination tag. So now some can transfer the XRP there. Now let's say you want to transfer from exchange one to exchange two. Uh, and let's say your source exchange is Uphold. You want to withdraw there and send it, deposit it to Bitstamp, your destination exchange. You have an account on both of them, your John Doe. Uh, so Bitstamp knows you as well and issued a pay ID, uh, they own Bitstamp.net. And let's say you want to send 100 USD value, so not actual USD, you just want to transfer the value. So uh, Exchange1 can contact uh, Bitstamp.net at john.do.bitstamp.net requesting all pay IDs for John Doe. And now Bitstamp can say, hey, I know this user, you can deposit for John Doe to me at the XRPL with R or whatever and a destination tag, BTC, a specific address, Ethereum, 0x, whatever, and maybe there's an ILP payment pointer. And now the client, like the, the sending side, uh, Uphold, can say, okay, for 100 USD value, I best use the XRPL because it's fast and it's cheap. So it's going to be transferred, converted to XRP, transferred, and then uh, the destination may convert it back, or maybe it will be an IOU, whatever. Now, let's say you're sending from an exchange uphold to Bank X, and Bank X also implemented pay ID. I mean, it can contain crypto addresses, but can also uh, include uh, uh, bank account numbers, whatever. It's like an address book. It's only the destination, not the actual transfer that's still happening on the, on the rails underneath. So let's say you want to send 100 USD value from Uphold to Bank X. You request like, hey, give me all pay IDs for this user. And Bank X says you can deposit over the XRPL or whatever in the destination tag or ILP. And we requ require travel rule compliance. So we want to know who the user is, who the sending user is. So now there's another message from Uphold to Bank X containing the information about the user and only then there's an OK and the actual transfer can be made to the destination uh, that was already communicated in the first request, uh, in the first pay ID request. Now this makes a lot of sense when you transfer from one exchange to another exchange or from one exchange to a bank because they provide services to KYC users. But what about if they uh, request if, if like travel rule compliance information is mandatory, which it will probably be someday soon, and you're using your own own ledger account, uh, so a non-custodial account, account like some or any other uh, wallet where you keep your keys. I mean, there's no sending side who knows who you are and can comply with travel rule compliance re uh, information requests. So that's what we're gonna add to some, it's gonna be opt-in. So we're gonna add some pro and then opt-in uh, which is opt-in of course, and then opt-in KYC, which means you will be able to go through KYC and maybe we will uh, work together with like uh, other identity providers. We'll see about that, still to be determined. But um, if we allow you to go through opt-in KYC, we can actually add the travel rule compliance bit to your uh, non-custodial, you keep your keys wallet environment. And that's gonna be pretty cool, I guess, and maybe even mandatory someday soon. Uh, so expect that in Q4 this year.